Hi and welcome to Linux and Windows Help. This is episode 13. We're going to be going over the basics of Linux. Uh, if you go ahead and watch uh, episode 5 and watch the first 7 minutes of it, it'll show you how to install Linux if you haven't already done that. So go ahead and do that and come back here. We're going to go over uh, privileges first. You type sudo su, you type your password. Now you have root. This is dangerous to leave it like this though, because let's say I leave this open like this and someone hacks this computer, they'll be able to you know, put in a back door or whatever. They'll be able to cause damage to this computer and put viruses in it. So that is unsafe to leave it like that. To other, another way to get super, super user powers, root, is to type sudo before a command. This command will install Firefox. It's already the newest version. Another way to install uh, programs, if you go to can't find it. There it is. Software Manager. If you go to Software Manager, you can install the same programs in here too. It's like a, a graphical user interface version of installing programs. So if it makes it easier for you, then that's the way to do it. But see, search for Firefox. And see, it's right there too. You can click on it and download it from here. Sort of like an app store. If it wasn't uh, already installed, it'd say install right here. So it's a lot faster with the, um, the terminal, but uh, this one's a lot easier to find things. So if you're not using this, then you'd be using a website to search what to type to install it. I use a terminal myself, I find it easier, because uh, that's what I'm going to be used to. Those are just options. Okay, we went over uh, installing a program, and we went over uh, privileges. Now let's just go over a few other things, like, uh, like here's the update manager. You can re refresh, and it'll, it'll tell you if there's anything to update, and you just click install updates. You can also do it with the terminal. First run this, and it'll update any packages. And after that's done, you type uh, sudo apt-kit upgrade. So the first one's update, and the second one's up upgrade. Just like Windows, after you do an update, like say if you run a server, you're going to want to reboot your computer. It doesn't ask you to reboot it in Linux, but if you want the changes to take effect, you got to reboot your system. People don't think so, but yeah, you got to reboot your system for the changes to take effect. Alright, let's go over some basic commands. We're going to do a change directory. Whenever you first uh, open up a terminal, you're in the, your home directory, which is right here. And that is actually physically root, home, danny, and that's your home folder. That's your user, whatever username you got. Uh, you, your username is not danny, I'm sure, but unless your name is danny. But, uh, that's pretty much it. Home, danny, is your home folder. That's default. If you want to get to the root folder, just like that. Now you're in the root. What that is, is right here. See that? To get back to the home, now you're back in the home. Check. See, you're back in the home again. So it's right here. 
All right, if you want to change the directory, you can also change the directory like this, CD, if you know the location. And we're gonna go into folder, catch all. What did I do wrong? Oh, what did I do wrong? CD, home, any, desktop. Ah, oh, whatever. It's probably capitalization. So we'll just go to desktop. I'm sure it's like this. The reason why it didn't work. There we go. So now we're in this desktop up here. We're in our desktop. So you'll be able to see the catch all folder and all that. We do the list. Install files. And those are all icons. And there's a catch all folder right there. So the reason why it didn't work before is because I didn't do the capital D and desktop and capital catch all. And that's the reason why it didn't work before. So right there. Alright, right there. Alright. Let's see what we can do now. Uh, let's Go over file creation. We're going to clear the board again. I'm going to go back to home. Alright, we're going to close this down. Oh no, we'll keep it open. We'll keep it open for this. Alright, so now we're in, this, we're in this directory. I'm going to go ahead and drag it down a little bit so we can see what's going on. Bring this up here. All right, we do some file creation. Let's uh, first create a uh, folder. We're gonna do mkdr home Danny. Nope, home Danny. My. You'll notice it just came in instantly, my path. Let's find it. There it is. That's my path right there. Okay. So we created a folder. Let's go ahead and change the directory to that because we're still in the home folder. Um, so we just, all we gotta do is type cd my path. Now we're in the My Path folder, which we just created. But I'm gonna go ahead and exit back out. But I'm just showing you you can get in there. I'm gonna go back a directory. Like that. Now we're back in the home. Alright, so I'm gonna do I'm gonna create a file now. Nano. Or you can use any text editor you want, but I just like nano sometimes. It's easy for me. But uh, it's a matter of preference. But I'm going to do home, any, then my path. I'm going to go ahead and click into it. And I'm going to call it my file, enter. So now you see, I opened up the text editor and it's got a temporary file right here, my file. So that's why I'm working on it, that's where it's at. So I'm just going to put, hello. And save it. For saving it's Control X, or for exit, and then it asks to save. Control X. Yes. Press Y for yes. It's save. Give it a second. Should have saved to the. Oh. There it is. So it saved. Now if I open this up with a text editor. right there. You can also create a file. Just right click and you can create a folder. This is, you know, just right click out here and you can create a new document. And you can name it my new file. So you don't have to use the command line. But it's just, it helps out to know all this stuff. So we create our file. 
And we're still in the home directory. Make sure. We're in a home directory. Um, we're gonna, let's move the file. Okay, so we're gonna go move. Home. Any. This one's in my path over here. This one's in home. So let's go ahead and boom. And my file should be in here. There it is. See, it's the same one. And it won't be in here anymore. Okay. So now this folder's empty. We don't need it anymore. You could have also moved it by just dragging it, you know, like if I have like my path. See that's right up there. I can grab this and you can just drag and drop it. I'm sure you know that already. But it's it's helpful to know both. So uh okay, so we got my file over here. Now we're gonna delete a directory. So remove home. Path. If you look, it's right here. Huh. Oh, I know what I'm doing wrong. Remove is to remove a file. And if you want to remove a directory, it's rmdir. It's like we made a directory, mkdir. So that's remove directory. But if it was a file, you wanted to use rm for remove the file. We'll do that later, or after this one. Home, Danny. My path. So the remove a directory is rmdir. And boom, it's gone. Now we're going to remove the file, my file. RM, home. I'm just going to do this one differently. So I'm in the home folder. And you see my file is already in there. So I can just do RM, my file. Because I'm already in the directory. So it's gone. I don't have to put the whole path if I'm in the directory. Alright, that's um, basic uh, file creation and moving things around. Now we're going to uh, go over opening things as administrator. Um, you can open up a, a folder with the, with the command prompt like this. Change directory. etc. At and then give it um, super user commands. Like that. Enter. Now the folder is opened up as super user. So the home folder is opened up as pseudo, pseudo user. So now you have you have root on this folder. All 
There's another way of doing it. We're gonna open the same folder. Say we got uh this is the way I usually do it. When I need super user uh say I wanna open up that same folder. Let's just open up any folder. So let's say I wanna open up I'll just like and click on ETC and open as administrator. I'll open as root. <clears throat> and you type your password. And now it'll open up a new folder, but you'll be in super user power. So this is the way I usually do it. If I need to edit a bunch of files, now you can delete the files, edit the files. And that folder is uh, and there's also a graphical uh, user interface uh, version for the terminal as well, and that is called um, I think I remember it's a GKSU Nautilus. That's it. GKSU Nautilus, and it loads a uh, graphical user interface of it. GKSU. I don't. Need I don't use this very much. And you put the folder you want to open. I should have opened it. going on there but whatever all right um let's go ahead and stop right there with all the commands you can look up a, you know whatever command you want Here, i'll show you you can go here and like i say you want to look how to list files on linux you just type it in the search engine you see it like is and it'll, it'll, you click into it and it'll teach you about all all the things you can do it there's so many different like uh, options and parameters that you can put in there. Like I just went over like basic stuff, but there's like so much stuff you can do with those commands. It's, so you just want to check all those out. All right. Um, I guess we'll go over one more. This is more kind of like a bonus thing, or not a bonus thing, but like a more advanced thing. But I'm just gonna. Um, I, did, I just wanted to go over basic on this video, but I'm going to go ahead and cover this one as well. But, uh, okay, sudo parted l for list. Enter. It's going to list all the... Um, all the drives that's on right now. If I had a uh, USB drive in there, it would list that as well. So the only things I got right now is the um, the primary, and the logical, and you know the swap. So that's all I got in there. But if I would put in a, uh, I don't know if I got a USB drive in there anywhere, but if I had a USB drive, I'd, I'd put it in there. And it would. Uh, it would uh, whatever. It would list it basically. So let's say so let's say uh oh I got one more command. So that list this petitions on your thing. I'm gonna go over DD, which is disk duplicate. It's a, it's an advanced thing, but it's uh, commonly used and it's a very it's a very cool tool. It's used for like cloning your drive or copying your CD. Or uh, making an image of your disk or image of your CD, so it's really easy to, to learn. Command is dd, which means disk duplicate. And there's also a lot more parameters and stuff. You can look up the command dd, but I'm gonna go over the basics of it right right now. So, uh, got if that stands for is input file or read. So, you know, this what it's gonna read. So, I wanna. I want it to home 
Danny. Just never be careful with this. My folder. Just be really careful with this. I'm just gonna create a folder real quick. Not, do not play around with this. It, it can like completely wipe your drive out if you do it wrong. So that's the folder I'm gonna go ahead and just throw a file in there real quick. Create a file. I saved it. So now it's got a it's got a file in there. Like I said, this could be a whole drive. Like it could be your um, your whole CD-ROM drive, or it could be your whole hard drive. And then you're gonna after that, after if you do of, which means uh, output file. Or write. And we're gonna write it to home desktop. Nope. Let's go for that again. Home Danny desktop. My image file dot ISO, which is an image file ISO, or IMG is also an image file as well. Hit enter. And what you see is it created an image file of this. Now, if this would have been my drive, it would have created my whole drive. And then my whole drive would be backed up on the image file. And then you can boot up a live CD, and then you can have your backup of your image, and then you just image it back over to your hard drive in case your computer fails. And that way, you know, you don't have to reinstall your operating system. You got it all backed up on the image. And you can also... Like I said, copy the CD into an image, and then you can copy the image back to a CD if you have like a CD copier installed on the computer. So yeah, it is a very important tool, but if you would happen to, let's say, install everything to root of your computer and completely wipe it out, you're going to be formatting your computer, and you're going to you're gonna be mad. You're going to be like, Danny, why did you show me this command? Because I just screwed up my computer. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. But I just want to throw that in there as an advanced uh, command because it's a very helpful command and you'll use it quite a bit actually. Another alternative to, to DD, but it's not really an alternative, because DD has so much power you can do with it. There's so many things you can do with it. I just showed you like the basic right there, basic, basic, basic of it. But, um, let's see what's that, Primary preferences. Nope, it's under accessories. There it is, like USB image writer. Pretty much the same thing. This will do is you select the image file. Let's do this one we just created, my image file. And then you select, uh, if you have a USB drive installed, it will take your image file and put it onto your USB drive. And that's how you make like a, a bootable USB drive to like boot Linux into your computer off a of USB. So it's a very, very helpful tool is DD. Alright, that's going to be the ending of this video. Sorry, I spent forever on it. But, uh, it's got some good commands in there that you can use. Make you, um, be more familiar with Linux. Anyways, thanks for watching. Bye.